Hello and welcome to this complete beginner whittling or wood carving lesson. In today's video we are going to look at how to antique carvings. And we're going to do that three ways. We're going to look at what is antiquing, when to antique, and how to antique. So let's start with what is antiquing. And I've got a number of carvings out here that have examples of antiquing. And what antiquing is, is it's a process of adding a finish to your painted carving, usually painted, a carving that gives it an older aged look, hence the name antiqued. Uh, now, what it does really is it takes a lighter color, and so this would be a plain green color on the left, and it adds a finish to it that makes it look aged on the right. Okay, and later in the video we're going to antique this one on the left, but you can see the difference there, and what it really does is it adds dark shadows inside the cracks and the crevice crevices, but it doesn't just do that, it also adds a finish to the paint that kind of makes it look a little bit aged, right? And so that's what antiquing is. It, it, it adds that depth to the carving, it makes it look aged, but it also adds um, depth by making the, cra the crevices or the cracks or the um, deeper parts of your carving look dar darker. So the second thing is when to antique. So let's talk about that a little bit. These are all good examples of when I would antique. Um, when I want the crevices, cuts, uh, deeper parts of my carving to show up as a, as a darker shadow, that is a good time to antique. When I want an aged look on my carving, that's a good time to antique. Let me give you some other examples here. So here's a, a tree on the right or a leaf on the left. These are lightly antiqued because I wanted to get a dark color down into the, the, the veins of the trees or the branches or the wood in this case. Uh, and I needed to make that, that line look, look darker. So those are, those are antiqued. Um, when I carve these stumps and logs, these are a lighter color tan paint and then they're antiqued to make it look like wood. So not necessarily going for an aged finish, but I'm going for a wood look, which makes the um, tan paint come across as uh, a little bit darker, more wood-like, and then the, the, the bark lines to look uh, darker and to, and to come out there. Uh, here's an example of a gnome that's been antiqued, and that makes the hair in the beard stand out a little bit more, but it makes the whole thing look just a little bit more aged. And I've used this in plants, things like this, um, to make the, the facets uh, where you've carved out the branches or things like that a little bit darker. So when you antique is when you want something to have that aged look or, um, or you want to make the, the dark surfaces come out. This one was antiqued before I added the, the bubble gum on it. Um, that's when you antique, but you also do it at a practical level, you antique after you've painted. When you're going to antique, you want your carving already to be painted and you want it to be thoroughly dry. If you antique before it's thoroughly dry, um, you'll end up taking some of the paint off. And so here's an example of this, uh, where I antiqued before the paint was dry and a lot of the paint came off. Now actually that looks like a very aged look, Maybe not even a bad thing, but if that's not what you're going for, um, you really want to make sure that your paint is completely dry before you antique. So that's when you antique. So I'm going to pause for a second and get my um, paint station set up here, and we'll look at how to antique. Okay, so now we're going to look at the last point here, which is how to antique. And antiquing is going to be essentially like painting. We're going to paint the carving and then we're going to wipe it off. And so it's going to be a pretty pretty simple process. And to do that, I'm going to use um, this uh, antiquing medium nutmeg from Folk Art. Now, there's a few different types of antiquing medium you could use, and you can read about people making their own antiquing solutions and things like that. As a complete beginner, I'd recommend that you just buy this. You can get it at hobby stores. You can get it at 
uh, Amazon. It's pretty easy to find. It's already made for you. You don't have to mix things up to do it. Uh, I'm going to use this because it's the one that I've, I've used the most, but I've recently started experimenting with these uh, gel stains, which you can also find easily, and they will do the same thing and you can use them the same way. So if you can't find this one, you can use these and they're, they're, they're just as good. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the way I'm gonna use this is basically the same way that I use my paint and similar to the paint, I'm going to actually um, water it down a little bit. So I'm going to put some in there in my palette and similar to the paint, if you do it full strength, you're going to get a really heavy, heavy antiquing um, effect. And if you water it down, you'll get a slightly less. So I'm going to water it down just a little bit. I would say that's probably about uh, 75% antiquing solution and 25% water. So that's still going to be a pretty heavy, heavy antiquing, which is what I want for this, for this carving right now. Uh, if you water it down too much, it'll just completely come off and you, you won't get many shadows in those cracks that you want. But if you uh, don't water it down at all, it may be a little bit overwhelming. So you can experiment with that. And these are a great project to do that with because they're quick and easy to do and the antiquing is the perfect um, finish for these. So what I'm going to do is uh, basically just paint this like I'm, like I'm painting it. And as I'm doing this, you might think, oh my gosh, he's painting it brown and it is going to look completely brown and that's what you want. You're going to cover the entire thing until it's completely covered in this antiquing solution. I'm going to be heavy about it. I'm going to make sure that it gets down deep into the cracks. I'm not trying to be careful. I am getting it everywhere heavy and deep, especially down in those cracks. I want it deep into each one of those cracks because that's what it's going to highlight. Okay. And so essentially, when you're done, it is going to look like you've dipped it in chocolate, more or less. Okay. So there we have the entire thing looking more or less like it's been dipped in chocolate, right? Okay. Now, I'm going to hold the top and bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and do the sides here. You could leave the sides undone, or um, you could come back and do them as a second step. Uh, this is just like the acrylic paint. If you get it on your fingers, it is not a big deal. You can wash it off. Um, so I don't worry too much about that. But you could always do the front and leave the sides unfinished uh, or whatever. I'm not going to bother with the top right now. Uh, but normally I'd come back and do that. So... I've covered the whole thing in this antiquing solution. And then what I'm gonna going to do is essentially just wipe it off. And I'm gonna use a paper towel to do that. You can use any kind of soft cloth. Um, and the idea is that I'm gonna wipe the surface off so the solution comes off of the surface, but that most of the solution stays in the cracks. And that's why it works so well on this project. So as I do that, you'll see that green start to come back out, right? But that brown is staying down in the cracks, okay? And I'm just going to lightly keep doing that across the entire thing. Work a little harder to get that upper lip. But what I'm not doing is going really heavy down into the cracks. I'm just going straight across the surface. And that's leaving that green on the top and the brown down inside of there. And I might go into the eyes just a little bit there so that the, the antiquing stays down there. Now on the sides, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to wipe it off. And what you're going to get is kind of more of an aged green look, right? It's got kind of that brown look on it. Okay. And it's going to come out like that. All right. And that's actually it. That's, that is antiqued. 
Um, I'm going to pause it and uh, give it a few minutes to kind of uh, try to dry and show you a little bit of what it looks like. But essentially, it should come out looking something like this one on the right. Okay. So this has dried some. You can see it's still a little bit wet in the cracks, but you get the you get the general idea of what that's what that's going to look like there. And uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Um, it might take a few hours to really to really dry off the inside there, but that's going to give you that nice antique effect. Um, a couple notes. Uh, I used uh, um, this one that I showed you here. I've had a lot of good luck with that. I have been starting to experiment with these. Uh, they're called gel stains. They're not called antiquing solution, but they work for antiquing. And I want to show you this one and this one. We're finished. Uh, this way. <laughs> this one on the left with this walnut color and this one on the right with this uh, maple color. Okay, uh, Just as a couple differences and then I will show you that this one uh, was not painted at all. Uh, I just started with a plain piece of uh, carved wood uh, completely not painted at all and just applied this um, walnut stain onto it. Did the exact same antiquing method, um, painted it on, brushed it off, and it came out looking really nice like that. So if you're looking for just a brown finish, um, that works really well without even having any, any paint on. So that's it. Uh, that's how you, how you antique. Uh, my only last bit of advice is to um, experiment with it, see, see what you like. Um, and take it a little bit easy. You might find on some carvings that you don't want to antique. I wouldn't antique, for example, um, the, the egg and the chick because I want that to be a bright, bright, happy color. Um, so think about what you're antiquing, but that's it. It's pretty easy and it's a, a fun way to get a nice um, final finish on, on your work. So thanks for watching. Happy whittling, happy painting.